So in the previous episode of my series that shares my Lithuanian language journey, I mentioned that I would be taking a break from lessons because of upcoming travels. Well, it's just a few days before I take off, but I wanted to give an update on some things I've learned and the progress I've made. First, I want to emphasize the importance of lessons and how much I've benefited from them. For me, there's no equivalent and true substitute for lesson time. But things I'll mention in this video supplement the hard work of quality lessons and studying. So when it comes to using the Ling app, I've more or less accessed it every day. And I think that's the main thing I like about it. It's easy to access and just a few taps away. It's something I continue to use while I'm riding the bus or while I'm waiting for someone or something. I've now progressed to their intermediate section of lessons and I'm currently on the Shapes, Objects, and Colors lesson. Now, I'm deliberately going slow with learning new stuff, opting instead to go back through older lessons to continuously review what I've learned already. It's amazing how fast something can be learned and forgotten, and honestly, I feel like I'm retaining about 65% of everything if I'm not incorporating or applying what I've learned in a real-world situation. While it's a useful and convenient app, it does also have its problems. As someone from the community pointed out in the previous video, there are mistakes sometimes. And in that one case, the Lithuanian word for artist, meninkas, was misspelled as meninkas. Meninkas. Jis yra garsus meninkas. And from time to time, I'll be using the app and it will play a recording of a Lithuanian phrase and my wife will say something like, wow, that is a weird and awkward way to say it. I think there was a small team of Lithuanian speakers who contributed to the lessons and, well, at least one particular contributor reads things far too slowly. It's either that or the slow audio feature was applied to her recordings at normal speed. I don't know. But despite all of these flaws, I still think it's better than nothing, which yes, I know, is a very low bar to set for myself. But that's the way it is. I'm really grateful to everyone who watches this channel and has contributed some advice and tips for learning Lithuanian. Here are some that stood out to me. Laudaness suggested a few things. One was to write the names of things on every appliance, utensil, piece of furniture, etc. around the house and read the name of the thing out loud every time it gets used. So I think this is a great idea, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. It takes a little bit of time and work, and I would definitely need to do it in a neat and tidy way so it doesn't look ugly. But yeah, I think it's a smart way to learn the names of new objects. The second thing was to change the language on all of my devices and online accounts to Lithuanian. So I've thought about this, but my computer-based work is so fast-paced and requires accuracy that I don't know if I can do this just yet. Again, it's a great idea, but I'm gonna delay this one for now. Then Laurinas and a few others mentioned watching things with Lithuanian subtitles on. So this appears to be easier said than done, at least for me. I mean, on YouTube, it has felt almost impossible any auto-generated captions on Lithuanian YouTube videos seem to display inaccurate and nonsensical Russian, while there's pretty much nothing on Netflix. It's a shame because these are the two platforms that I use the most for entertainment. I thought that something like Go3, or Go3, would certainly have had Lithuanian text. However, in searching through their content on their website, there doesn't seem to be anything either, even for their Lithuanian content which is strange. Lithuanians who are deaf or have hearing problems must be quite limited in what they can watch. I asked you guys about this and a few people suggested LRT's Mediateka site. Um, I don't know if people are suggesting stuff without checking first, or maybe I'm missing something, but I can't seem to find subtitles here either. I see settings for video quality and playback speed, but no subtitles. So what's going on? My whole strategy of watching content with subtitles was going to be my way of absorbing Lithuanian while being entertained and perhaps learning more about Lithuanian news and culture, but I seem to have hit a roadblock when it comes to free and legal Lithuanian media. It's just something I'll have to continue to figure out. 
But moving on, a number of people actually suggested that I should focus on building my vocabulary rather than making sure that grammar is perfect. Well, I really hope you guys are right, because that's definitely something I would be happy to do. I think it's not only more practical, but it's also less discouraging for someone in the early stages of learning the language. So thanks for that great piece of advice. Going back to the topic of motivation, I've definitely figured out why the motivation isn't there, and it mostly comes down to the nature of my job, which is the field of freelance journalism and video editing. As a freelancer, every article I write and every video I produce earns me more money. I'm not on a salary where income is fixed and I get paid the same no matter how much or how little I work. Instead, I can choose to work almost any time and as a result, earn more money from it. So because of this type of job, if I have a few hours open on a Saturday and I can choose to work and earn an extra 30 euros or study Lithuanian, then I'm almost always going to choose more work, unfortunately. I mean, if I hated my job, it might be a different story, but you know, I quite enjoy what I do for a living. And so I guess I'm lucky in that sense. On the other side of motivation, or lack of motivation, is that there's no clear, massive, well-defined payoff for me to learn Lithuanian quickly. I don't need it for work, it's not associated with a hobby or interest that I'm pursuing, and so there isn't that immediate drive. There is the support and respect of all of the Lithuanians watching my content, and believe me, it motivates me to not give up. But I hope you know what I mean. There isn't someone metaphorically lighting a fire under my butt to be fluent in the language quickly. So this makes me think of a Ukrainian friend's mother, who was essentially a refugee living in Vilnius. This woman took a language course when she first arrived, but due to her specialized occupation, will need to be certified to a B1 level of Lithuanian. So now she's putting in a crazy amount of extra time and energy to get to this level as soon as possible. I'm incredibly impressed and cheering her on as she does this, but I'm also very fortunate not to have that same type of pressure. But when it comes to learning speed, I came to the important realization that I don't need to think too much about the speed of my progress. And it's something a lot of you mentioned as well. Lithuania is my new home and I'm not planning on moving away, and so I should just relax a little and absorb new words and phrases bit by bit as I go through my daily life in Vilnius. With all of that said, I do want to make a video that's fully or partially in Lithuanian, with English subtitles, sometime in the future. It would of course help me practice the language, but also just link a certain point in time with a certain level of progress. Well, actually, why don't I just start now with my conclusion to this video? It might be revised or assisted with either a translation website or my wife, but I promise I'm learning while I do this. Todėl ačiū visiems, kad žiūrėjote. Ypatinga, aš noriu sakyti ačiū visiems už nuoletinį padrasinimą. Aš labai dėkingas. Ačiū, ačiū, ačiū. Pasimatysime kitą kartą. Thank <laughs> you.